Hi everyone, welcome back to my workshop. It seems to be a very, very long time indeed since the last video I posted back in the summer. Since then I've done a lot of racing off-road, I've been away for a few weeks, done some filming etc up in the north of England. It's now October 2022, October the 15th to be precise as, we, as we're filming this, and I've decided to produce another video. The nights are drawing in, the weather's a, weather is getting cold, we've had one of the hot, oh well, the hottest summer on record here, here in England. It is a couple of days, it was unbearable. It was like living in a sauna. This is a slightly different video to what we've, I've done in the past. Usually I discuss my nitro cars and how I set a, a nitro car up for off-road and, and the trials and tribulations and the fortunes of, and misfortunes of racing off-road. Going off in a slightly different direction here, in this video I'm going to build the, the, the Tamiya TT02 and on this case it's going to have the McLaren Senna shell on it. I'll talk you through the build, how I build the car, how I set the car up and the changes and the upgrades that I make to the standard kit and there are a few. This kit is a Tamiya TT02. It's been around for a while. It is available in a number of different options. There are numerous different body shells you can buy with it, from like hypercars such as the McLaren Senna, to the, to the Ford Escort Cosworth, various GTRR cars, up to modern day hot hatches. This is an ideal car for the absolute complete beginner because it comes complete with a, with a basic brush speed controller and a brush motor. All you need to add to the car to finish it off is a battery, a steering servo and radio gear. Charge the battery up and off you go. There's a lot of club racing around and in a couple of weeks time I'm going to race this car at, at a local club circuit. And I'll do, a, do another video then saying how we got on. But meanwhile let's, go, let's get on, on with the build. I ordered the car on the m Monday and it arrived the following day. This is the box that it, that it comes in. Really, really not nice box but well presented. Usual Tamiya kit. So yeah. Let's ha have a quick look, look at un un what's in, in the box and then we'll get, get, get on with the build. So to build this car, a lot of the things you need are all, all in the box. Included in the box is a little box wrench to do up most of the screws and nuts and bolts in there. Some Tamiya grease in the instructions it will tell you where, where the grease needs to go. You don't get any thread lock. There's a couple of metal on metal screws in there. I've decided to use thread lock. Learn from my past mistakes. When I first built a Tamiya car in the 1990s, I thought, oh, you don't need thread lock. After five minutes of driving the car around the track, a lot of the, the th thread, threads on there started to come undone. So I've always used thread lock ever since. You will need a good pair of pliers to, to cut the parts off of the, off of the sprues before you start gluing it together. This is a motor and the speed controller that, ca that came in the car. I've personally discarded those, so I, I won't use them. But again, you'll need to make sure that you've got a battery with a Dean's plug. And though m m most batteries these days come with XT60s connectors, that's a stock, to stock torque tune motor. Won't be using those. The only other thing that you may need if you go down that just stock speed controller is the programming card. Let's just, just have, a, have a quick look at that. I was hoping there'd be a way you can reverse the motor on there, but there isn't. I was able to solve that by using the, just by reversing the switches on, and switch throws on the, servo throws on the transmitter and that worked fine but one of those is, is an advantage I've also turned the punch down on, on its like to make the car a bit less aggressive coming out the corners but I, I can turn that up again that concludes all the parts you, you'll need to build the car so just before I open the box we've got the McLaren Senna in the big box at the back on, on the TTO2 chassis there's a couple of optional extras that I've ordered with the kit that is mainly a ball race set to make the drive trains run more efficiently Upgraded spur gear, which will inc should increase the top speed, and an upgraded drive shaft. Sitting here are some additional shock absorbers that I bought from Hobby King many, many, many years ago to go on my old Yokomo YR4 touring car, and it was going to make a comeback, but it ne it never did. The Yokomo had micro shock absorbers on it, and those shocks didn't fit, so they sat in my toolbox ever since. Hopefully, they'll be fitting onto the Santa, and everything all be all be re ready to go. In the meantime, I'm just going to clear everything else out of the way and open the box. I haven't built a Tamiya kit since the early 1990s when I built a Tamiya Escort Cosworth, which wasn't unlike one of these, but again, Usual Tamiya kit, very, very well packed. We've got the manual there, which I'll go through. 
You've also got a separate manual on how to mask up the, the McLaren Senna body kit and how all of that goes together. Sitting in the box, we've got the usual RC parts bag. Interesting, there's a nice torque-tuned motor in there. That looks... Oh, that's an RS540. You've got all the... Oh, those are like the, the metal bushes that I'll replace those with the, with the bearings. I think you need to go in there. Here we, we've got the famous McLaren Senna wing to go on the back of the car. That should be good fun putting that together. Also got the wing mirrors and a few other bits and pieces. McLaren Senna body shell, which like all RC shells, I'll paint from the inside. And then there's like a protective skin over the top of it, so when all the paint overspray has come is on there, we'll be able to peel the skin back and the body shell look cool. That's nicely pre-cut, which is, ooh. That is a hallmark of a good kit, because cutting wheel arches is a horrible job to do. You've got to get the curves just about right, otherwise they look awful. That's done for us. Brilliant, nice one, Tamiya. Got a front bumper. Set of tyres that may need to be glued to the wheels. Don't know if I'm going to use those, because the Ada track where I'm planning to race this, I usually use a set of tyres called sweeps. But I might fit those just to see how they go on. They'll need to be glued on with some super glue. That's an interesting thing to go in the kit because that's a brush speed controller which it's got a Dean's plug on it so I'll have to swap that over but that's not too bad. That will go straight onto the motor. That is really good. I wasn't expecting to see that in, in the box at all. I thought it might be an old style uh, Tamiya um, ceramic resistor type speed controller but that's brilliant. I wasn't expecting that in there at all. What else have we got? Monocoque tub that all the gears, boxes, components sit in. We've got, they look like the gear housing assemblies. Then the front hubs. Got lots of bumper posts and some body mount posts, which is great. And that's like the oh, lower and upper wishbones and the wishbones there and some, that looks like some um, suspension components. Finally, that looks like the drive shaft. Yeah, that's that's the drive shaft in there. That's one of the pop items I'm going to replace with the upgraded version. Under a high torque situation, bearing in mind that car's going to have a brushless motor in it at some point, that shaft is going to twist. But replacing that with a metal shaft will be fine. We've got the drive shaft cups in there. Great. Have some McLaren Senna wheels in there. Yeah, that looks like the radio plate and the motor mount and the servo horns, steering servo horn. And finally, what's we got in there? What's that? So we're trying to find a good version of it in English. Oh, that's just some basic assembly points. Aerial tube. And finally, it will come out the box. We've got the, the window mask set, and we've got the decals. Brilliant. Okay, I'm not going to do a blow-by-blow -blow build on how this goes together. There's numerous videos like this already. There's, there's some things on RC Kicks that says how, how to do that. What I will do is, at various points during the build, I'll do a couple, a couple of quick videos in there and show how it's going together. In the meantime, let's get the bench cleared off and let's start building. So that's page one, or page five, as the, as, the, as, the manual, as the build starts. No real pitfalls there. There's a different part there, which is a collar that goes onto the drive shaft when you're using the updated spur gear. I've fitted the ball races there. There's another one in, in there, which is different to the standard kit. There's a, also, there's a ball race in underneath that cover. Another ball race there. Tamiya grease is supplied in the kit, which you need to use. There's some Tamiya grease. And the other thing I've done, I've got some bearing lubri lubricant that I use on the 1 8 cars, and I've gone in and I've just given a little one, dro one drop of bearing lubricant on all, each of the, all of the four ball races. That concludes the build of page 5. Let's move on, on to the next fact section. So that's the two differentials built. That's the first one that's complete, and that's the second one that's just going together. It just needs a cover on it and the four screws picked in. Trouble finding the four screws, they're in a different bag, but again, that's a relatively straightforward diff to put together. Much, much, much more basic than anything you'll ever see in a 1.8 Rallycross car. It's just got some Tamiya grease around it. 
just needs this little part to go in the top of it and then the cap screwed on and then we'll have the second diff complete. So we're now at the foot of page six of the build. We've just got the front top uprights on and those things, those little ball things pushed in there all very well and good. Went together very well indeed. Um, build so far has been okay. Um, all I would say, when you are building the diffs up, the little cog that goes on, on the end of the drive shaft and the cogs that, and the bigger cogs that go in the diff pay very, very close attention to the part numbers that you're using when you put them together and the part numbers part, and the plastic part numbers the cog that goes on the end of the shaft well the, the bevel gear that goes on the end of the shaft and the bevel gear that goes in, the two bevel gears that go into the differential are very very similar in, in in size and they look very very similar there's a couple of microns difference if you do get them wrong the whole lot won't, won't go together so pay a bit of attention a bit of attention to that that's the only place where i'd really look um again everything's going together nicely <coughs> yep the gear, the the different, the gears in the differentials are made of plastic, unlike the ones in the one eighth nitro cars, which are made made of metal. Yeah, good good quality. This car, it comes with the twenty seven turn brush brush motor to start with. That's 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 the motor that that came in the kit, and that's all all ideal to start with. Some people are fitting brushless motors in here, which is great. I wouldn't want to go anything anything lower than a seventeen point five turn, otherwise you'll probably rip, rip the gearbox out. But yeah. So far, so good. Yeah, pretty good, nice high quality kit. So I'm just about to start painting the body shell. The body shell's just been masked up and I'll talk you through the body shell in a minute. I've decided to use some airbrush paint to paint the body shell with as I personally prefer it to the rattle cans. I think it actually works out cheaper because the various um, rattle cans that you can use for painting a Lexan body can work out expensive and I'd, I'd probably get through a couple of them. Talk you through the body in a minute, but first of all, I, I've masked the body up and I've cut it. Can't fault the quality of the body shell. Use your Tamiya product. Really, really good quality. All ready to go. I've already given the body coat. The, sorry, I've already given the body shell a coat of this like plain white material. It's like a pearl white. It gives it goes onto the body shell first, and it gives it like a nice sort of like metallic -y effect. I used the Hobby Knox paint, which I decanted into the airbrush jar. It's got a really fine, sort of like milky, sort of like consistency. Giving it a couple of coats of that. Wanted to paint the body shell in like a dark orange colour. Again, I've used some Createx paint on that, which I've got from Amazon. That works out at about £5.50 a bottle. Put some uh, darker red into it to darken it down a bit, because that's a really bright fluorescent orange. That's a nice fluorescent yellow for, my, for like the next shell I'm going to paint. My airbrush, some people spend a fortune on airbrushes. This is a fairly ancient Badger airbrush that I bought at a model show many, many, many years ago. It's painted everything from model aeroplanes, model cars, model tanks, model railways. I'm currently in the process of building a Gage 1 locomotive. As again, it's just a, I think it was about a, a tenner. You can use a dedicated airbrush compressor. I've got my Jack of All Trades compressor that's down under the bench down here. My trusty Clark compressor. That's easily 25 years old, probably nearer 27 years old. And I've adapted it up using the air hose and an, and an old air can to go on this so I can run it off of the air, off of the compressor. Painting with Createx paints, I us, usually paint it around 25 PSI. I can go up, I can go down, but that should do. Again, all of these, um, there's some hobby, that's a Hobby Knox paint, that's a Hobby Knox paint. That one was a Hobby Knox paint, whoops, knocking all my paints over. But again, I was just yesterday I needed realised I needed some paint, so I just ordered these Createx paints which I got from Amazon. Ordered them yesterday afternoon and they dropped through, dropped dropped through the door this morning. Driver's just been so yeah, it's it's time to paint the body shell. Again, here's a body shell. She's been masked up, ready to go. It's got the usual um, inverted mask on it. It's all printed on there. That was all incidentally that wasn't cut. Unlike some of the body shells you buy from a UK supplier. The, the mask in there, I, I had to cut out with scissors, but that's all, all in there. You can see if I just hold the thing up to the to the light, you can see where, where that that white metallic paint is semi-transparent. If I compare it yeah, up, up to the walls, you can see where it's gone on there. When I've finished it, it'll have a nice orangey colour on it. This is a McLaren Senna body shell. McLaren Senna is one of my all-time favourite cars. I've got three top top cars in the world that I like. All-time favourite car is a Ford RS200. Watch this space. 
Second all-time favourite car ever is a Ferrari Testarossa, and the third is a McLaren Senna. I was fortunate enough to be taken for a ride in one of these when I worked for McLaren. And when I say that this car does not to 60 in under three seconds, believe me, it does. Wait, I'm just going to paint the, paint the car now. I'm not going to um, video me air, airbrushing, just in, just in case I, I say something I shouldn't if it all, all goes wrong. But yeah, I'll talk to you again once, once I've finished uh, doing the painting. So that's got the first layer of paint on it, looking okay. It's nice and orangey, nice and metallic-y. It does look very flat and a bit on the on the matte side. That's because under there's like a very very thin layer of like cling film on on top of there. And once we I finish painting the shell, that will be painted. That will be removed. and It will look nice and glossy, and the decals can go on. Underneath, look, looking okay. I'm gonna have to blow in a few few little bits again. That isn't only the first coat together on there. Uh, just going to leave that for an hour or, hour or two to dry. Just cleaning the air, airbrush gun out with some methylated spirit to stop all the paint setting in there. Got some, yeah, just got an, another jar of the orangey paint I made up to go in there. And yeah, all looking good so far. I'm scrutinising where the mask lines are and doesn't look to be any signs of seepage. So yeah, all looking good. So it's now the following day. The paint's been drying overnight and it's looking quite good. A couple of things I, I did late yesterday when I came back in here. I took the side mask off and I painted that in black on the full size of the Clarence Center. That is like a tinted glass, and if you're driving along in it, you can see the road flashing past you down by your ankles. Didn't have any smoke paint, and over the in, in the past I've had some disasters with, with smoke paint. So painted that black, took the roof masks off. We've got the roof panels in black. There's, in the decals, there's a nice looking exhaust thing to go on there. Just really now got the window masks on, but before I do that, I'm gonna uns I'm gonna basically I'm gonna unskin the car. All round here, there's gonna be some overspray. I can actually feel that when I'm as I'm running my finger on there. There's a lot of overspray spray on there. So, and if I put the decals on there, all they would do is peel off. I've made a start on this already, but at the side of the car, we've got like this skin that goes on top of the legs and shell. Just gonna start peeling that away now. Many, many years ago, I painted a, when Tammy just for it first released their Ford Escort Cosmo kit. I spent hours painting the shell up, put the decals on it, didn't realise it, that it had like this protective skin on it. Put the decals onto the protective skin, and a few weeks later, they all started peeling off. And again, that is looking awesome. Just gonna have, just gonna finish this, this off now. And then we'll, we'll have, a, have a look at the body after the skin's been removed. So yeah, that's all looking good. We, we've got the skin off now here. You can just see down, that's where the wheel arches would have been. There's some overspray on there, so that's done a good good job of getting rid of the overspray. Paintwork is looking fantastic. It's got that nice metallic -y feel on it. The rest of the car's looking good. I need to mount the wing on the back of it. That needs to be done. Next job is, is to go through and do the decals. Um, yeah, based on price experience, Tammy decals are really, really good quality. I'll get those fitted. That's what I'm going to take the best part of half, half an hour to fit that, maybe a bit longer to get them properly, get them done properly. Get the wing fitted, and then the body shell is by and large complete. So the body shell is now complete. That's been painted, it's unmasked, and it's looking pretty good. I put some of the decals on it that came with the kit. Um, that's all black paint, that's black paint, there's some decals around there, and it's got the McLaren logos on the back and the infamous Senna's exhaust on there. You could quite literally spend hours deckling that car, but the fact after the first meeting it's going to look rather battered anyway, there's no point, I personally don't think there's any point in putting all those, spending hours putting decals on there when the car's going to be going through a race meeting. Certainly if I was going to be using the car as, as a shelf queen, then I'll certainly put some more time and effort on to putting the decals on, but that, that will do for now. It's pretty unique. A lot of people have said, is, is that colour red? Is it pink or is it orange? It's a mixture of red and orange. Um, I wanted to make a unique colour, which is great. Chances are of being able to mix that pigment of colour up again is pretty remote. Um, chassis all finished, have gone together. We've got the modified prop shaft in there. Got the steering servo in there. That's actually a 1 8th Rallycross servo, and it fitted with literally about half a millimetre to spare. That is really, really tight in there. But again, 
all the steering alignments lined up, all the tracking's done, and everything's set up there. It's a motor to go in there, which I'll talk about in a minute. Battery, my cheap, cheap Z battery from Amazon fits in there great, which is perfectly okay for now. Got the XC60 um, connector on there. The Hobby King shock absorbers fitted, but not brilliantly. There's a lot of slop on the, well, there's a little bit of slop on the rear ones. If we move move down the front, there is a heck of a lot of slop. I'll just give, give that a wiggle. Yep. Yeah, that would adversely affect the handling of the car, so I'll just come round onto something that's going to solve that. DPD, the courier guy, has just been. Uh, I've ordered some modification parts that go on there. First one is like the wheel studs behind there. You can might just see it on the car. There are like these things in there that look like fake brake discs that make the wheel adapters up. They're fine for now, but if you, they're not not ideal for racing. But if you were just going to be going around a parking lot, that'd be fine. So, I got the the wheel studs on there. They'll, they'll screw in together. Got a motor plate adjuster. The plate that holds the the motor to the, the plate that holds the motor to the car is like this plastic thing. It's got all these different holes in there, which does give perfect alignment if you're using standard gearing. I'm using completely different standard gearing, and I'll come on to, onto that in in a minute. But yeah, that would take some 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 lining up. So we've got that motor plate to go in there, which I'll fit shortly. In the same box, I've got a Hobby Wing Just Stock electronic speed controller for brushless and a brand new Hobby Wing 17.5 turn brushless motor that would do nicely. Also, some fast track shock absorbers. They're st still in their wrapper, but you can just about see those. They are designed for the TT02 chassis. That should they should make really make a difference to the handling. And last but not least, on the 3D printer, I printed up a spoiler. That's or sorry, a diffuser. That will go in there. That will fit fit in there, and it will sit that way round. And the idea is it will direct the air away from the car, which should make it a bit more aerodynamically efficient. So I'm going I'm to get the soldering iron out. I've got to fit. I've got to solder the the wires from the ESC onto the onto the motor. I've got to take those bullet connectors away and wire in an XC60 plug, which I'll do now. I'll get everything fitted in there, every, everything unpacked, and, and then I'll, we'll start the car up, and then we are, are as good as done. So that's got the car in, everything is now wired up. We've got the just stock speed controller there with its fan on it sitting in there, that's all hard wired in. We've got the Justox 17.5 turn electric motor in there. We've got a 49 tooth spur gear and uh, 89 tooth, um, no, 89 tooth spur gear, 49 tooth pinion in there. Unfortunately, the spur gear cover that came with the car didn't fit. It would have needed some adaptation on it, so I'll just run, run something different off on the 3D printer to, to cover that up. Um, fast track shocks are on. They look really, really good. The steering linkages are this is all of this round here is like kit standard. Probably upgrade that again at some point because it is an awful lot of slop in there. Um yeah, there's a lot of slop indeed in there. That could do with do with do with being ball raced. Apart from that, everything, yeah, it, yeah, she she's ready to go. Let's go racing. So there's the completed car. It's looking really, really good. I can't wait to get the thing out on track. So here we are. The build of this car is now complete. The body shell's been fitted, all the electronics are on there, the car's ready to go, and uh, yeah, I think it's looking quite smart. I haven't gone to the full effort of putting on all the decals that came with the kit. At the end of the day, this is a race car, it's not a shelf queen. After the first meeting, this car will probably look rather used in, in, indeed. But yeah, looking forward to getting on the track, and hopefully you'll join me in the next video when we see how we get on. Bye-bye for now.